Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial or Geek Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller and in this tutorial we're going to go through Hexagon and Photoshop and View. And I'm going to show you how to create a really good looking, grungy, dirty window or glass material for your 3D model. So to begin with, let's start off with a cube and I'm just going to very uh, quickly create a very basic window. This tutorial is not on making the window as a whole, but its, uh, its primary focus is on the UV mapping of it and of creating the texture for the glass in Photoshop. So I'm going to select that face, vertex modeling, sweep surface, and I will sweep inwards, spacebar, come in just a bit, and sweep in again. And there we go. Validate that. Select that face. And I'm going to come over here to free tessellate and do a quad tessellation of it. Select all four of those faces. Sweep surface. And I want to make sure I click on this button right here because that will allow me to scale each of these polygons independently rather than as a whole. So scale in just a little bit spacebar and extrude inwards there we are and validate that select those four pieces of glass come over here to extract and that's going to be our glass spin around here to the back we can move this in a little bit and delete button we don't need that back surface okay let's come over here to UV and paint and come to a split screen and I'm gonna select my glass and we'll do that first and what I want to do is apply a planar projection to it just like this now it takes all four panes of my glass and splits them up equally here and that's perfect exactly what I want because it allows me to work on each pane of glass separately. Now it is true if I wanted all of the panes of glass to be all identical then I would probably want to use a planar projection and let's see it's probably not it's, it's not good. actually you know what would work well for this the cubic projection and then use this setting no nope, that one won't work that's not working I guess we'll just go with planar and if I wanted to uh, have all of them identical well then I could just drag them all uh, over one another uh, like this but I want them all separate so I'm gonna, going to use planar projection yes and I want each of them to be uh, receive their own texture Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's come over here to our window. Let me expand this. I will hide my glass material. I'm going to come over here to select edges and I'll select that edge, hold down shift, select that edge, hold down shift, that edge, hold down shift, and just keep adding these edges to my selection. Hold down shift on that one, on these two, on those two, and on those two, on these two, yeah, these are done. And on, whoops, not on that one. On those two, hit L on the keyboard to loop that. I want to make sure all of them are selected. And that's good. Come over here to unfold. I will add all those edges as a, a selection. And now I'll hit unfold. Now it doesn't look like much right now, but it will in just a minute. Uh, let's see about our projection axes. Now, Y, X. There we go. I like that. Okay. 
select faces, select that face. Let me zoom in here. And I'm going to orient this vertically. Select those faces, and I'm going to orient them vertically as well. Put them right next to one another. They should be the same size, ideally. And let's select all of them, scale them up a little bit. Now these should be the same size as these as well. Just shows you how kind of behind the times the uh, UV tools are that Hexagon has. It's good for modeling, but if you really want use some, some robust UV tools, you may want to look elsewhere or wait till they improve uh, and come out with a new version for Hexagon. Okay, all of these should be the center ones here, and they are, and I want them to all be the same size. Now these are going to be my outer ones, so they definitely need to be significantly larger. And all of them are laid out perfectly, so I'm just going to scale, put them right here in the center, like that. Hit I on the keyboard to invert my selection. Now I've got my smaller ones here, and these can come down a little bit in size. I'm happy with that. Validate that. And I'm going to save this UV map. Now, um, I have them sharing, overlapping like this. And ultimately, they will be sharing some of the same areas on my texture map. And that's fine. I'm going to make this out of wood. I'm going to use a, uh, you know, a, a photo image and apply it to this. So it's okay that they share some of the same texture and it's okay that these UVs overlap. It's not a big deal. The only thing I want to make sure of is that all of these UV polygons are arranged vertically because I'm going to use a wood grain on them. I want the wood grain to all be uh, I want all of these pieces here, these individual pieces, to have the wood grain running along its length. So I'm happy with that. Let me save this. I'm going to call this wood. And for my glass one, I will save this and call it glass. I will export this. I want to make sure both of these objects are visible. Export wavefront object. I'll call this window or wando. And we're done with this. Now to come into Photoshop here. And let's start on the window first. No, nope, not that one. Glass, that's the one. Okay, this is my UV map. Each of these squares represents each of the glass polygons in our model. Now I want to apply a, a texture to this and make the window look grungy. So in Bridge I happen to have uh, three textures that I got over at cgtextures.com and I'm going to use this grunge map here. So I'll double click on it and it opens it up. I'm going to drag it onto my UV map. Uh, in order to use this properly for my window I need to desaturate it and the reason I'm desaturating it is for this effect we're going to use this grunge material as a alpha map and alpha maps work based on the amount of um, white and black in the image. I'm going to trim off the excess here. The brightest white portions of this material, if it is pure white, 255, 255, 255, it will be completely transparent. If it is completely black, which is 000, that area of the texture will be completely visible. So if this texture contains any pure white, that particular area will be purely or completely invisible. Any, ex any areas that are pure black, that area will be transparent. 
and all the graduating scales or colors of black and white in between this gray area, these will be graduating uh, amounts of transparency. And that's what's going to help give us that dirty, grungy look. Okay, uh, this is fine so far. What I want to do is I'm just going to turn it off, create a new layer above it. These are my four panes. I also want to give the uh, make the appearance that some of these panes are broken and some of them are missing. So, as I said earlier, any areas that are pure white will be completely invisible. So, with my, I'll just use my uh, rectangular marquee tool. I'll just create a selection around this pane. Alt delete, fill that in with white. Let's move over here to our other one. And I'm just going to leave this one rise at, right as it is. Come over to this one. I'm going to use my polygon selection tool. And <clears throat> I'm just going to create the effect of broken glass here. And Alt Delete to fill that in. Oh, let's just move over here to my other one. Now I'm just going to use my paintbrush here and let me create another layer. In my paintbrush, where is it? Uh, I guess I lost it it's somewhere. So let me brushes. There we are. I have some brushes I got over at Daz by Ron Deviney and these are shattered glass brushes and what this will allow you to do is actually paint on broken glass there is that brush and I lost my brush again my brushes palette let me pin that down there there we are okay there he's got a whole bunch um, so you want this effect. A whole bunch of different effects and how what color you paint them will determine what color uh, or whether they are transparent or invisible or or visible I should say uh, in your render. If you don't have any of these not a big deal you can find freebie ones uh, on the internet, try Renderosity. I'm just going to let me reset my brushes. I'm just going to use good old Photoshop brushes and I will use a hard edge brush and no spacing. And I'm just going to, now I'm not an artist or anything, I'm just going to just to show you a different way. Of course, you hopefully your hand will be a little bit better than mine at drawing all this. Another way you can create this effect. You may not want to use a round brush, but but uh, something that has sharp angles on it to avoid this uh, rounded, squiggly uh, appearance the sharp broken fractured appearance is better but I'm just doing it to show you that you know there's a number of ways you can um, uh, apply this effect okay so let's uh, enable the visibility of everything there's my grunge map this is the white portion I painted on here which will cause this area to be transparent so let's save as and I'll actually I'll, I'll save it as a JPEG no uh, a PNG save it right over the old one okay yes no I don't want to save it now let's bring in our wood texture let's come in here to bridge and we'll just slap some wood on here I'm not going to be overly picky. This is just an illustration. OK. 
Okay. And save as PNG would. Save it over the old. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to pause it here and open up view. And I will be right back. Okay, so in view 7, I've got my model loaded. Let's bring in the wood texture. Object parametric, mapped picture. And I'm just going to navigate my way to the desktop and find wood PNG. There it is. Now before I go and do the glass material, let me do a render here. This is why UV mapping is so much better. Actually, let me do a final render. I'll be right back when this is finished. Notice the direction of the grain. It is, it is uh, going in the direction of each piece of wood. And especially on these little bits here. And this is the correct orientation that wood has if you were to build this, uh, you know, manually uh, by hand. Much better than a procedural map which applies the material all in one direction. So that means the grain of the wood would, would be going this direction on these vertical pieces. It would be fine for here and here and here, but these vertical pieces, uh, the wood grain would be running counter to them, and it just looks really cheesy. So that's why I wanted to UV map this. Okay, now on to the glass. Let's do object. Well, you know what? Let's just reset this material. And I will give it a, a a dirty a dirty come on stay there there we are a dirty beige color to it uh, I want more gray to it there we are and lighten it up some okay. That's the color I want. Now I, what I need to do is focus on the transparency of it. Over here in my thumbnail you see there's no transparency. So I'm going to jack the transparency all the way up to 100%. Makes it completely invisible. Do a quick render. And you see the panes of glass are completely transparent. We need to adjust that. So I'm going to come over here and click variable transparency and I'm going to control the variation of the transparency by that UV map we made in uh, in Photoshop. Well, we didn't make the UV map in Photoshop. We textured it in Photoshop. So I'm going to click on this one to create a mapping node and I want to apply what is it? Alpha? No, grayscale output. And down here, I'm just going to navigate my way onto my desktop where I have my glass PNG. And there she is. Now notice here the areas on here that are, are missing, like a big chunk is missing. Those are going to be the pure white areas of our map. So let's do a quick render. Okay, the lighting on this is not completely working. Okay, that will work a little bit better. Let's do a final render, and I'll be right back. Okay, if you recall, in Photoshop, we made this pane completely white. As a result, it's totally transparent. This one, we left alone. As a result, the texture, the grunge map, the grunge texture that we overlaid our, on top of our glass UV map, its transparency is being driven by the, the grunge map and the different areas of white and black on it. Down here is where I use the polygon selection tool or lasso tool and you see the area that I created the white uh, portion in and over here is where I use my white paintbrush. And if you want it to be a little bit darker, 
then just come down here to glass, open it back up, and let's bring it down to say 70%. Now it will make this part here a little bit darker, but you can see here this area is a little bit more pronounced, and it still looks like it has some missing glass pieces in here. So this is a really efficient way um, to create broken glass. It's, it, it's a lot easier painting, painting it in Photoshop than it is trying to actually make all these little polygons in any other 3D modeling program. So this is the, the end of this tutorial on creating grungy, dirty, uh, glass textures and from my experience you can find grunge textures all over the internet all over the internet or you can just go and create your own and um, that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching my name is Gary Miller have a good day